outliers in the data can throw off a least squares regression model. Figure one shows a least squares regression for a set of data. And when I say that, I just mean it's the line through the data. You shoot a line through to try to represent the dots as best you can. And you find the equation of that line. But for figure two, basically what I did was I changed this point right here. And so that point became this point in figure two. And I wanted to show what that did to that line. So it, it changed the line from the dotted. Okay, the dotted line is what was in figure one. That's figure one. That's the dotted line. But just by changing that one point, it completely changed the line. And so this one point makes my equation not as good. All right. So outliers throw off the data. And so this solid line right here is no longer a good model, maybe. We need to try to solve that problem. And that's where median fit regression comes in. Median fit regression is going to handle outliers a little bit better. It's going to be easier than least squares, what we did yesterday. But the drawback is it's going to be kind of an estimate. It's not going to be quite as accurate. Median fit regression is a simpler method for finding a linear model. Plus, it may give better results when an outlier exists. The reason for this is similar to why the median is a better representative of these data. If you think about these numbers right here, most of us prefer the mean. The average of the numbers usually seems to be more descriptive of the numbers. But in this case, think about the average. If I add up all of those numbers, I get 118 divided by there are 10 numbers in that set so the average is 11.8 so think about the number 11.8 and how that doesn't even rec that that doesn't represent any of those numbers that's not a very good indication of what those numbers are it's kind of like if if i said let's take the average of everybody in this room's bank account okay and you know you have thirty dollars and you have a hundred dollars and you have fifty and everybody in here has like some little bitty amount but i have a million in my bank account we find the average and that's going to be something you know ninety four thousand dollars you know whatever i don't know um that's not a very good indication of all of the numbers of all of the the amounts that you might have in your bank accounts so we look at the median here And the median is just the middle. Remember, we find the middle, and and uh, if there's two numbers, you find the average. But the median number is two, and that's a really good indication of, of all of those numbers. The median is a better representative of those numbers than the mean, and it's it's because of this outlier right here. That thing kind of throws off the average, and so that's what this median fit is going to be good for. It's going to be good when there's an outlier. Here are the steps for how to do a median fit regression. Number one, order the data and split it into three equal groups. So put them in order, one, two, three, four, five, put them in order, and then try to split them equally into three equal groups. If you can't split them in three equal groups, what this says is make sure the first one and the third one have the same number of numbers, okay? Split them equally if you can, and if you can't, the first group and the third group are the same. Step two, find the medians for X and Y of each group. Step three, find M using this formula. This should look familiar. And step four, find B. Let's, let's come back to that. So here we've got the same data set, the same numbers that we had from the least squares example from before. Only we're going to do a median fit. So step one, if you look at your steps, step one says put them in order. Well, they're already in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're already in order. And split them into three equal groups. Okay, well, I can't really split them equally. But remember, if you can't split them equally, just split them so that the first group and the third group are the same. So I've got a group of two, a group of three, and a group of two. That's about as good as I'm going to get. Okay, put them in order. Split them into three groups. Step two says find the medians for X and Y of each group. So 
So I'm going to have a median for each of those three groups. So median one. Remember, a median is just in the middle, the number in the middle. And if you if you if you have two numbers, then you have to find the average of those two numbers. And so in the middle of one and two is 1.5. Hang on. And in the middle of 1.5 and 3.8, that's maybe difficult to do in my head. So just find the middle, 2.65, 2.65. What we have here is a, an XY point. That's an XY point, that median. But I need to do median two. And median two is just is just four nine. That's the number in the middle. Median is the number in the middle. We got the number in the middle because it was an odd number of numbers. So four nine is that median. And then for median three, we need the middle of six and seven. So that's six point five. And the middle of those two numbers. Fourteen point eight. So you've got actually six medians here, three X's and three Y's. Now, what was step three? Step three says find M using the first and third medians. So this looks like the slope formula. It is the slope formula, but, it, but you're finding the slope between the first median and the third median. So that's why I write the formula like this, y3 minus y1 over x3 minus x1. So y3 is 14.8 minus y1 is 2.65. x3 is 6.5 minus x1 is 1.5. So find the slope the same way you've always found the slope. Y minus Y, X minus X. Twelve point one five over five. Twelve point one five over five. Two point four three. That's your slope. And if that number sounds familiar, that number might ring a bell. If you look back when we did this problem before, ah, where was it? Come on. There we go. Before we did it, it was 2.414, and we rounded off, but 2.43 is awfully close to that 2.414 we got when we did the least squares. So that's good. We've got a pretty good estimate. We're right on track. So now we need to find the B number. Okay, go back to the steps. And find B by finding the average of B1, B2, B3. All right, and B1, B2, B3 have to do with the, the B number for each of those three medians. Um, but essentially we're finding uh, the average of those three points, kind of, all right? And you've got two choices. Um, they're both doing the same thing. I kind of prefer the second one. I think it's just easier to calculate. You've got to add the Ys and subtract M times the sum of the Xs, divide by three, divide by three, because we're talking about an average.
So those X numbers and Y numbers are just the median numbers that we found from before. So Y1, 2.65, and Y2 is 9, and Y3 is 14.8. And M, we just found that was 2.43. And then you've got your X numbers. X1 was 1.5. X2 was 4. And X3 was 6.5. So it's basically a plug and chug problem. Get a calculator that you're good at, that you're good with. Um, and let's knock this thing out. So you can maybe even type it all in at once. 2.65 plus 9 plus 14.8. Close it. Minus 2.43 times 1.5 plus 4 plus 6.5. Negative 2.71. So that's the numerator. You got to divide that by three. So we have divide by three, negative 0.903, about negative 0.903. We've got our M and we've got our B and that's our answer. That's our model, Y equals 2.43 x minus 0.903. And if you look back, what we got before, when we did least squares, it was y equals 2.414x minus 0.829. So that's a really good estimate. What we got here for median fit, that's a really good estimate. And, and the, the benefit, I think, is it's a lot faster. It's just not quite as accurate. This answer is the accurate answer. Our answer is kind of an estimate. Now, Another example, this one about crickets. Crickets are known to chirp faster at higher temperature and slower at lower temperatures. The number of church, uh, chirps is thus a function of the temperature. The following data were collected and recorded. We're gonna use linear regression, and what we're actually gonna do is use a linear regression calculator to find the model. So we could do this by hand again. We could do least squares, we could do median fit, but we're going to do it. We're going to use a calculator, and that calculator is going to be the least squares method. So it'll be the more accurate method anyway. So let's check it out. Linear regression. Uh, what you do if you if you don't have a graphing calculator, go to Gold Adder and go to the math sites, and you want to find the one that says linear regression. You can type in a search, or you can scroll down, but find the one that says linear regression. And it'll take you to this site, and you're going to need to enter in those data points. So I'm going to go back in. I'd rather type them. I would double check them just to make sure you entered everything in right. One thing I don't like about this site is if you need to change one of the numbers, you have to just start over and they won't let you go back and change anything. So I think they're right. I click calculate and let's see what happens. Okay, so they give you a little picture of it. And this picture, you know, not real cool, but they give you all of this information information that you don't really need. But if you scroll all the way down, it gives you the equation. 
equation. Y equals 3.775X minus 146.8. All right, sweet. That seems like it. 3.775X minus 146.8. Where are we at? That's the equation. That's the model. Now, I didn't ask you what the R squared value was or the, the correlation coefficient, but that, that'll come up some point, probably on your quiz. Let's go back and look at those results again. If you, if you go up a little bit, it says something about R square. R square is, is 0 0.9930 right there, right there, 0.993. That's your R squared value. And I think it's a little bit tricky to know the difference between R squared and R, but your R squared value was 0.993. That tells me something about the, the fit of the line. Anything that's really close to one is really good. The closer to one this R squared is, the better. And so you saw that graph. The line goes through the dots and hits almost perfectly. Yes? Well, think of it like 100%, okay? But in order to really answer the question, I tried to talk about it way back here let's see the question was what does that 0.993 really mean let's see where are we we talked about this correlation coefficient uh oh where was it we were talking about residuals yeah It has to do with this, okay? Um, we're talking about the sum of the squares, and we're trying to see. Oh gosh, it's really that's a really tough question to answer on the fly. Um, it has to do with. how far this point is from the ideal point. We've got an actual, we've got an actual point and we've got an ideal point. And so there's a really complicated um, calculation. And the why, the reason I'm struggling to explain it is because we're really talking about this calculation right here. We're talking about the, the correlation coefficient. It's a really complicated way of, of figuring out you know, how far those those dots are, or how close they are, I guess I should say, how close those dots are to the ideal. And the line, the equation is the, the perfect ideal scenario, but in real life, you've got dots scattered all over the place, and they might be um, really close, or they might not be really close. So when you get a number like one, that's telling you that, that it's... Um, that it's a really good fit. Okay, I guess if I had to look at an equation, this one might be a little bit easier to understand uh, what what that means. But but why hat? Why hat are the the ideal numbers? You take your x numbers and plug them into the equation, and that's what you want to get. Okay, but y bar is the average and y y is your regular okay so you're you're finding the difference <laughs> you're finding the ratio of the difference of your ideal numbers from the mean compared with the actual numbers to the mean and I know that's really hard to understand. <laughs> so, uh, you know, good question. I'm sure I butchered that explanation, but it's it's tough. But long story short, it's like 100%. When you're when you're really close to one, it's like 100% accurate. Okay. Now, that r squared is not the correlation co coefficient. R is, and this website does not give me the r value. Okay. 
And that's okay, because it's not very hard to figure out. Because all you'd have to do is just take the square root. If I've got r squared, I just take the square root and I've got r. So I can take my calculator and let's do the square root of 0.993. And I get 9965. R is going to be 0.9965. And I would know I would know that that's a positive value because this is a positive correlation. As these numbers increase, these numbers also increase. That's a positive correlation. If it was a negative correlation, that R value would be negative. But it still kind of paints a picture of how good of a fit it is. 0.9965 tells me it's a really good fit. But it also, since that's a positive number, tells me that, that it's a positive correlation. All right. Whew. Long story um, to just get this for your model. Next question says, use your model to predict how many chirps a cricket will chirp at 90. What are we going to do? Good. Plug 90 in for X. So about 193 about 193 would be your number of chirps now this one i gave you an x number i gave you this is an x and this is a y i gave you an x number of 90 and you figured out the y number it was 193 but i could just as easily give you this number over here, give you the Y number and have you figure out X. So pay attention on your assignment because it's going to be one or the other. I'm not sure. 